Okay, so let's get started. All I have right now is a file saved named as artifact version 001. Uh, we'll, we'll be starting very simple and get things more complicated as we go along. First, I'll just switch my user interface to um, just having these two available. And let's create a geometry in a container, dive inside. Uh, let's go up and let's just rename this already to artifact dev, dive inside. And we'll start with a platonic solid and we'll switch this to soccer ball. Shift W on the viewport, just so we can visualize the wireframe as well. Disable the grid. And the first thing I'll new, do is uh, delete some attributes that this object already has inside. You can go ahead and just delete everything. And this is the the volume that we're going to be starting off. As for size, let's go with something with the radius, a small radius, so we can have an idea of how this is going to be working in terms of scale and distances. So it's a radius of 20 centimeters. And um, yeah, let's we'll start from that. A bit bigger than a soccer ball, actually, but um, it's um, a good starting point. Let's create some normals. Let's reduce the cusp angle quite a bit. So we do have some nice solid transitions from one plane to another. And the other thing I'll want to do is we know we want to be, we will be wanting to work on each face individually. So I'm going to apply a facet right now and just um, select unique points right now. And so now we have all these separate pieces that you can have a look with something like an exploded view. Okay. Everything's separate. We're not going to be using this right now. Now, first step, we want several layers of this. So this is the object that we have, and we want to create an artifact that's based on several layers of the same type of shape that's going to be uh, rotating in different directions, different scales, and doing uh, different type of effects regarding um, the scale of each one of the faces, the distance to center as well. And uh, yeah, for now, let's create a copy. Actually, pretty easy this part. And let's uh, make sure that on this copy, we're going to be reducing the scale 0 0.9 for now. Let's hit W in the viewport so we can actually see what we're creating. So then we'll be able to play with how much, how many layers we actually have. Okay. Let's start with two, just two is enough for now. Um, what else? Let's make sure we have this attribute applied to it. It's going to be useful as well, the copy num. And then we can um, create a for each loop that's going to be precisely based on that. So for each named primitive, it's fine. And the piece attribute is going to be copy num. So now we're working on the first one. And if you go through the for each loop, we'll work on all of them. Another thing that we will want to do is create a meta import attribute. It's going to be useful for a bunch of stuff. For now, all I want to be starting with is making sure that they're each rotating in different directions. And um, yeah, that's, that's the first step. So let's create a transform. For that, we'll use a transform. Now we do know that this transform will have to be different from one to the other. Each layer will have its own uh, values. And the way we can uh, do that is by using expressions and playing with um, um, either the copy num attribute or actually the iteration attribute on this for each um, begin metadata. 
So I'm going to create a spare input here. Add spare input. I'm going to connect this here. It's It'll be easier to reference this uh, as minus one. So let's start with the random rotation on the X axis. Let's say we want something like the random element or the, the variable that's going to be changing from uh, layer to layer is going to be based on the iteration number. So I'm going to create the detail on that meta, uh, that metadata node iteration. Okay. So this will give me the current iteration here, which will be iteration. Actually it'll be zero. The first one will be zero. Uh, let's see if I can show you that it'll be zero. It'll be zero. So uh, because the first one is going to be zero, we want to make sure that this is actually um, not zero because this will be multiplying the rotations. And we want to make sure that this is the minimum value we'll have here for this part of the multi series of multiplications we'll be making. It shouldn't be zero, otherwise we'll have no rotation. Then we'll multiply this by time. Of course, we want this to be um, time dependent, even though it's not a solver, it will give us a, a different number in each place in time, each moment in time. And then we'll set a random value that we'll use as a um, multiplier for this particular axis. And we'll use a different multiplier for each one of the axes. Let's say 0 0.25. We can actually copy the expression, control O, control A, control C, tab, control V. Let's just change this to one. And on the last one, control V, let's change the multiplier to five. Okay. So this will already give us some rotation going on. Let's make sure we look at this in real time and let's not do a single pass. Let's do both. Okay. Really slow. So it'll be good for us to have a control to multiply this. The other thing is that they are starting very aligned. So here on this copy, we can actually apply some uh, rotation on each copy as well. So instead of just working with the scale, we can work with, uh, let's say 90 here. That way every copy will be, will have its own alignment. They won't be perfectly aligned. Um, so I was saying that this is very slow. Let's make sure we have a multiplier for this. Again, let's make sure we have two, we're working with two. So here we can also add a, parameter interface and let's create another parameter here and uh, let's put it right on top. Let's say mm, here and let's call it rot molt rotation multiplier. What a great name accept rotation multiplier and let's start with 10. Copy this parameter and let's put it here somewhere. I'm going to try and expand this so we have a bit more visibility here times base relative references. And we can just copy this. Control C, jump to the next one. Control V, jump to the next one and Control V. Okay, so now each one has its own rotation. You'll see they, they, they're not perfectly aligned. We can add multiple layers and they will each have its own rotation, apparently. Okay, there is a, an order to this, but uh, it will look as they are kind of randomly rotating each one on its own axis. Cool. So this was the first step, creating the layering system, just basically using a copy transform. Uh, we'll have control of how many layers. 
uh, we're kind of shrinking the, the outer layer a bunch of times by 0 0.9 and we're making sure that everyone is uh, each one is rotated by this value. You can also use values that are more kind of um, natural associated to nature. Things like plants tend to like uh, angles like this. It seems like a more natural randomness for the rotation, but it's up to you. I'm going to keep it at 90. I think it's, it works well enough. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next stage. 